Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the largest hands-on RV training academy in America. <clears throat> hey, this week, Mike Watkins is gonna throw me into that age-old debate that I don't want an answer. Which one is better? Using electrical crimp connectors or some type of crimp connectors on my electrical wiring or to solder them. Now, I do have my preference, okay? There's a second question that he asked, which is kind of fun. He says, hey, in the RV industry, are we ever gonna follow code? <laughs> Who are we gonna follow? All right, so let me go ahead and answer that. We do follow code. It's the uh, NFPA and the NEC. We do take our guidelines uh, from what's already out there and establish us the NFPA, okay? So now let's get into the question, you know, should we solder our connections together or use a crimp uh, connection? Now, I will tell you, I prefer a, cr a crimp connection. So let's say we're putting stuff together and I'm having to put some type of fitting on the end of electrical connection. Let's say I'm putting together a solar system or uh, whatever. I'm gonna use a crimp connection. Now, the quality of the crimper is what's really gonna be paramount, okay? I wanna take that copper, whether it's tin copper or regular stranded copper, and I wanna compress that down. I wanna compress it evenly to where it becomes basically what we call a cold weld. I wanna make sure that it's just 100% copper inside that connection, okay? And a good quality crimper will do that. Any devices where you just squeeze it, that's really not a quality crimper. You need a crimper with dies. You get the proper size, the proper gauge wiring, you put in your fitting, put in your wire, and you crimp it. Do not, I do not like, of course, um, using any type of um, uh, soldering. Now let me tell you about soldering from what I know, okay? Now I do understand that in certain applications, soldering is amazing. But if you have stranded wire and you solder, solder, the solder itself, whether it's going to be silver, whether it's going to be any type of um, um, uh, tin or whatever, it's going to wick up those strands, okay? And that's going to create air gaps. So I don't prefer soldering at all when it comes to my connections. Now, um, if it's going to be on a circuit board or something like that, sure. You can solder it there. If it's gonna be low amperage, but I need a good connection, sure, solder it, okay? But if it's gonna to go to, say, a battery post, or it's gonna to go to a bus bar or something that it's exposed, then I will definitely, the larger the, the gauge of the wire as well, I will definitely um, refer to actually using a crimp connection. Very small connections, sure, then maybe we can solder. S circuit boards, solder. So that's, I guess that's in the weeds. I know it's a specific question, but the reason why I answered that is because we're getting in, um, in the RV space, we're getting more and more and more into solar, and we as RV owners need to understand these connections. So I wanna go ahead and do that. I know it's kind of, kind of not generally uh, uh, consumable for the general public. Great question. I prefer if it's gonna be high amp or large gauge cable. We'll use uh, a good solid crimper with dies. If it's something small, going to be on a circuit board, and I can get a good clean connection, then sure, then we can go with the solder. Second question again, you know, is the uh, industry, are we going to follow those? That's, that's the question, right? We do have those guidelines, and that's kind of how they're looked as a guideline. Um, but can we, can we do better with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when we're looking over, say, with these connections, what should we do? Well, the closest thing that we have is the marine industry, right? There's a few things that are different in the marine industry, um, but the marine industry has been, you know, basically forming their guidelines for quite a while now. So they've done a lot of the work. We can definitely glean off of the marine industry and kind of follow that as well. But right now, we're following the NFPA, uh, secondarily the NEC. And then from there, we'll look at other things. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, roll the bloopers. Still good? Yep. All right. Is it better to have some type of, uh, I don't even know what the hell he said. No one will know it's the same day. 